Hello and welcome back to our Medieval Total War Holy Roman Empire Glorious Achievements Campaign and we are starting off in a very precarious situation here. It is 1142. We are being attacked. We've been invaded by the Spanish who have a couple of fairly strong armies just kicked us out of Burgundy and Provence at least temporarily and so we're launching a counterattack there. We've just been warned uh, by the Pope to cease our attack against the Italians, which is really a counterattack on our part. The Italians attacked us first, so we att attempted to achieve some of our new goals, the Holy Roman Empire goal in particular, to seize Milan and maybe Tuscany uh, as part of a reprisal for their attack, uh, but the Pope has told us to back off. So we are going to do that. The Italians are currently suffering a bit of a civil war at the moment, uh, but, and I've made a few changes to my lineup. I basically sent a lot of forces west, all my forces from Milan to retake Burgundy and maybe eventually Provence from the Spanish. Now the Spanish uh, are fairly strong, however they are struggling somewhat against the Almohads who have managed to hold on or take back Cordoba. So the Spanish have not made a lot of progress down here. They've taken out the Aragonese and they have, you know, uh, swiped back at us. But I think we can handle them. The big question is, what are the Italians going to do? If they attack us, can we defend? And if not, when we counterattack, well, we're going to be excommunicated, and what's going to be the result there? Our current emperor, Rudolf II, is 53 years old. He's got decent influence at this stage, but a few more losses of provinces and excommunication are going to have a hit there. We are seeing some unrest on our provinces, so I've had to lower... Uh, the tax rates in a few places, even core territories like Franconia. Uh, Milan, of course, this is going to rebel. Hopefully it's going to go to 50-50 rebels and Italians, uh, but we're just leaving it to them, essentially. Uh, the other thing we've got going on this turn is an assault of Tripoli, the citadel there. If we can do that, and we can just get this province fast, we'll get uh, a couple of points for the Crusade goals, but more importantly, some influence for our king, and I'm afraid that is going to be badly needed. Now, I mentioned shifting around our attack orders. I had originally thrown basically everything at Burgundy, but I'm not so sure that's necessary at this point. For one thing, sending the king over there is going to decrease the attack strength in terms of uh, rankings. My king has one command star, whereas Prince Friedrich here, a very loyal prince, has two. Two command stars is, of course, better than one. And if the king is leading this attack, he's going to take over. So his one command star is going to supersede the prince's because he's the king. He commands on the battlefield whenever he's present. So rather than do that, I figure I'll split him back over here to Tyrolia, where I suspect the Italians may want to launch an attack. If I can defend and beat them badly enough that they're not interested in hitting here or Austria again, that'll at least buy me some time, maybe, so that I won't get excommunicated. The other thing I've done significantly is brought down my two units of Swabian swordsmen who have just started to recruit. Only got two units of these guys so far, uh, and I had originally sent them into Burgundy, but I don't think they're going to be necessary there. So these guys are very good on the defense, very good versus armored troops. However, the Spanish have a lot of javelins, and they've got cavalry, and they've got archers. All of those things are going to be tough on my Swabians, and really it's, I think it's going to be more important for me to have a lot of archers like I do uh, than to focus on heavy, slow infantry. So we'll just end the turn here and see how this is all going to shake out. And now the other question is, is my king just going to die of old age here uh, in a couple, of, a couple of turns? Okay, the Spanish are moving in. Looks like we didn't get attacked by the Italians, although they did counterattack into Milan. That's totally fine. All right, the Spanish, the Spanish are attacking Lorraine. I did not see that coming. Okay. I think we're just going to retreat to the stronghold here. We've got peasants. We've got urban militia. There's just no way um, um, we're going to hold out against that. The good news is Lorraine, I believe, is adjacent to Flanders, where we have some significant forces built up. So this is not going to be good for influence, but let's retreat to the stronghold. Yeah, we can counterattack from Friesland and from Flanders at least, and even from Swabia. Okay, castle is assaulted in Provence. They're assaulting... right, this is just a fort. I don't think we've seen any fort assaults in this campaign. Um, and let's do it. This is not going to succeed. As you can tell, they've got lots of, you know, um, 
infantry, or they've got plenty of infantry to deal with this. But I've got at least a few archers, and uh, we can sort of see what a what a unupgraded fort looks like on the battle map. All right, the glorious Marseille castle. Are you ready? There it is. Oh, it looks like I have. Well, actually, I can't remember what the totally basic uh, fort looks like. I don't think I built any upgrades here, though. I think this is this is pretty much it. Um, you can have an extra wall, I believe. You can sort of get that other layer of defense. Oh, the Spanish have brought uh, have brought a ballista, so they're going to take their time here. Now, they've also deployed in a weird formation with most of their forces down here. And those are the more significant ones. So we could theoretically rush out. Uh, can we deploy outside the fort? We actually can. And this is... Uh, I can't tell what that is. That is... It possibly spearmen. It doesn't quite look like feudal sergeants to me. So let's get everybody outside of the fort here. Um, this is r rather risky, but again, I, this is not one we're going to win anyway. Uh, I want both of these guys, uh, yes, to be on engage at will so they don't skirmish away. Uh, I really wish I had some better units here. But I guess we're just going to have to live with it. I'm going to send these this peasant blob straight at the ballista crew. These are just spearmen. And I've got Spearmen too, but they've got zero Valor. Again, you can tell that not only by the, the card here, but by the total lack of flags. Uh, it looks like their Spearmen have a lot of Valor. Two points. Alright, the Ballista is now destroyed at least. That is something. I do want to keep an eye on these troops. Uh, there's no one else anywhere else. I believe this is inaccessible terrain here. There's a little cliff. So they will most likely just walk around. And if there's any chance that I can uh, wipe out this unit of spearmen, I'll just rush everybody back into the fort. The ballista crew are actually fighting back. Oh, it looks like we got some routing here. Alright, I think it's time to withdraw. See if the archers can get back in. Your general has dishonorably allowed himself to be captured. All right, some of those archers are routing. If this archer can make it in without routing, we at least won't lose automatically. Okay, there we go. We're back inside. They've got their nice infinite morale. Once again, these guys are going to route back into the fort too, which may just allow the Spanish to come in. Could be a bit of a mixed blessing, actually, because we'll be able to surround them, and then the other units will have to bust through the gates. All right, so let's um, let's get everybody well away. I kind of want them to come in. My men won't rout. Nope, nope, shut right in their face. Okay, I mean, I guess I could actually... Um, let's save the urban militia, actually. We've got three peasants here that we can send to attack these 60 spearmen. Some of these troops are going to maybe start attacking the stockade. Yeah, this is 12% damage, probably from the ballista, actually. Uh, but in this game, any unit can just attack a wall like this, like a wooden wall. They can just start hacking it down. And uh, if it gets damaged enough, it can be destroyed, obviously. Do you have... 12 spearmen left. If that stockade gets destroyed, they can go right in. Obviously, the easier way to get in is through the gate, although that tends to be covered by uh, boiling oil, which makes it uh, somewhat costly for the defender. Now, it's easy to, you know, potentially mock the, uh, the crudity of the, the sieges uh, compared to, like, Medieval 2, right, where you could they're just so much more elaborate defenses and you could get on the walls and stuff um, but as the level of fortification increases you do start to see more options uh, and sieges can be really effective actually for the defender you can get a tiny garrison in a well built up uh, citadel or fortress which is the highest tier you can get lots of um, 
outer curtain walls. You can get towers. Yep, there they go. A hundred peasants. All right, those spearmen are now running away. They don't really have a place to go. Uh, obviously, we don't have that much else we can do at this point. I'm going to save our fire. I don't know exactly what I would save it for. We're not going to have that much more time to shoot, but... But bleeding an enemy at a... Yeah. Bleeding your enemy at a well-defended uh, fortress is actually a totally viable strategy uh, in this game. Uh, you can do a fantastic last-ditch siege defense. We got another breach there. Let's just see what we can do to these peasants, because honestly... You know, they're seeing some routing. Losing slightly. I, there they go, okay. Now these are feudal sergeants. They're they're not gonna rout. Let's bring uh let's bring my guys back in. And we just want to hold up these feudal sergeants so that we can get in a few shots on the flank. You know, again, this is um this is not gonna be great, but well, but one of the things you can see is that we are shooting uh, outside of the fort. There's a ring of bodies here, and I'm not sure if that's from our archers or if it's actually from the defenses themselves. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any towers on the outside, but possibly this one uh, fires out some sort of missile. All right, this is going to be the end here. I'll just speed it up. And there they go. And out of spite, yeah, we'll, we'll kill those guys. So, you know, that did something. Uh, they destroyed five of our facilities and pillaged 650 florins. In Burgundy, they just withdrew. Okay, we took that back without a fight. That's nice. Here we're assaulting Tripoli Castle, and this is a proper keep. So let's do this again. Um, I'll show this for you as well. We've got a couple of siege equipment. We want to leave that up there. That's going to be helpful in this scenario. And you can tell that there's some stone walls here as well as some wooden walls. Uh, let's let's just do a little minor shifting here. We don't need these two, these 32 peasants. Those guys can kind of come in a bit later. Uh, yeah, the AI, uh, the automatic decision making with regard to reinforcements is rather random. Uh, so it's really best to shuffle this yourself. Unless you feel like playing on a totally even field with the AI, because I don't think they can shuffle their reinforcements. So it's really just a, uh, a feature for the player. But let's, let's see. Let's go with that. We don't want a lot of cav in our initial assault. And I'll take the fanatics, honestly. And these militia sergeants will be good. Probably these 28 spearmen, though, are not, not going to be that helpful. Um, that's probably going to be plenty, honestly. I'm overthinking this. So Tripoli uh, is, is shown as snow-covered. I am quite certain that is not going to be the case. It's just that when you fight multiple battles in a year, uh, you can fight some in the winter time. Okay, sandstorms. Now, I'm not totally sure with this effect. It's probably ranged accuracy, if I had to guess. Maybe fatigue, certainly visibility. Um, let's go ahead and attack, because we're not going to be doing a lot of archery in this. Now, this is the same exact kind of battle map, isn't it, uh, to the last one, in terms of the terrain, anyway. Uh, the, so let's move our uh, siege stuff first. So here's the castle. This is a uh, keep level, I believe, or possibly it's an actual castle. But we've got uh, we've got the castle walls, and then we've got the wooden walls or the stockade. Now we're going to have two gates to fight through here. The first one out here, and the second one in there with a proper gatehouse. That I think is where the boiling oil is going to come from. But we're also going to face arrow fire from all of these towers. Uh, and the enemy is going to be inside the main keep, most likely. So we're going to have to kind of be aware of this, uh, you know, that our our siege equipment is potentially going to be in range of some of these towers. And we want to make sure we can actually hit those towers as well. Like, I'd like to take out this wall and maybe that wall, or maybe, yeah, actually maybe this castle wall is what we should really aim at. Let's bring the ballista slightly closer. 
I'm thinking that's probably within range of the arrow tower though well you know if nothing else we can throw some of our Slav spearmen forward uh, to uh, to do some damage to the wooden stockade you don't actually need siege equipment for for any of these uh, you can bust into every fortification with just melee force all right let's um let's let's go for the castle wall honestly yeah we're under fire already if we can get into this castle wall uh, and just that's where the general is he's on some Bedouins 7% damage this is gonna take a little while let's uh, let's see if we can do it notice we're under fire all right Let's go ahead. We'll send the Slavs at the stockade. Just to distract because, man, my general is it's coming under attack. Not expecting that. I guess we'll bring the archers forward. Set them into uh, loose formation. Run them up there. Alright, it's doing a little bit of damage. We still got lots of rocks. Okay, they got Nubians in here. This could, this could be tricky. This is not going to be a walkover. We can get through this pretty easily, I think. They've just got archers. they got some Ghulams, some Bedouin Camel Warriors. Really, the Nubian Spearmen are the most problematic part of this, plus all of the arrow fire that's coming from the towers. There was the first layer of the castle wall. That's a third of it, which is pretty good in terms of the amount of ammo we have left. These guys, I think, they are skirmishing away, so I'm, I really want them up here. Stockade is almost through, and then I think the Slavs by themselves will be able to handle the interior. Let's just uh, charge in the larger unit right at the archers. But we're, they're going to be coming under fire, too. Um, let's send some spearmen, order foot soldiers. And some slightly heavier infantry. We'll see how long they hold out. All right, we're winning. Cutting those archers down by half. Oh, our archers are firing in here. That's uh, that's good. I wasn't sure they'd be able to hit. All right, we got 50% of that castle wall damaged. Again, that's just going to save us having to hack through the gatehouse, which is going to be very costly. I think we're going to get this. And, you know, I am going to go for the gatehouse. Because there's a chance we might not get this down. And I may as well use up uh, my Slav warriors. So let's send them to attack. We'll show you what that looks like. Just one archer left here. Yep, there goes the boiling oil. You know, and it's not quite that deadly honestly you know it is uh, it is dangerous you do want to keep an eye on it but it's not the worst you can you can you can soak some of it get these guys really close to the wall I wonder if my archers can fire in here no the walls are just too high or the angles not good Gatehouse is 0% damage. What are you guys doing? Okay, there we go. Yeah, 65%. We're about half uh, ammo left on the catapult. This gatehouse is going down. We'll probably get it. Let's uh, speed it up a little. 50, 70, 80, 92. There we go. Onward to victory. All right, what do I want to lead here? Probably the feudal men at arms. Get the order foot soldiers here. Now, this is just going to be brutal. There is just no way around it. 
If we can get this thing down, we'll have another flank, uh, which we can attack over. They got a lot of camels here. The unfortunate thing is the AI, I don't know if they can dismount, um, but we could have dismounted uh, before the battle. You can dismount all your cavalry in a siege situation. All right, sorry about that, just a phone call here. Now, um, are we actually attacking? There we go. They're running into something. It's like they can't get through the gatehouse. Let's move the Slavs out of the way, maybe. All right, here we go. We're getting through. We're hitting the Nubians. Now, these guys have three Valor. So we're actually winning in this fight. It's unexpected. I mean, I figured we could win against Spearmen, but uh, this doesn't seem like the ideal scenario for them. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up the, I guess, this unit of order, Foot Soldiers. There we go. Right in there, and we're going we're gonna to take some damage. Let's move the archers. We're going to basically screen with our archers, which is a shame because you want to use them. They're very useful in Crusades. All right, there we go. We've got that unit of Nubians just about taken care of. Let's move our uh, Order Foot Soldiers through against the others. Now we're going to get hit by uh, by the camels on both sides. That's not going to be great. Although, heavily armored infantry here. Oh yeah, we're chewing through them. Now it could be that when uh, Bedouin camel warriors dismount, I think they just dismount to a unit of peasants as infantry. And so if the AI can dismount, it's possible that they simply chose not to. Right, send in the Slavs here. We're just going to surround them. We're going to try to end this fast. But I'm really surprised how well we did. This is a, I think, 40 or so feudal men-at-arms. And the fact that they're still so intact is, uh, is rather surprising to me. We should be totally fine. Probably uh, taking a few more losses than I needed to by just setting up close to the arrow fire, but you know, I wanted to protect my infantry. I used the archers to sort of screen. Uh, let's go over here, I guess, with those guys. We're going to have these guys all down very soon. All right, there's the spearmen taking care of those Bedouins. Just the general, basically, but we are seeing some routing. Finally, our feudal men-at-arms get chased away. Try to make sure there's no other enemy set up anywhere else. Okay, who's that? That's Slob Warriors. All right. All right, we got to bring this to a conclusion here. Five Bedouin Camel Warriors. Now, with all of the... Uh, the enemy general has there we go. Slain, and even now his Brutal. We lost almost 300 men. I wish it told us how many we started with. Well, okay. I guess 503, right? I guess that's what we got left. Okay, we killed 288, but we lost 377. It's a little confusing how this is um, how this is uh, laid out here. We lost 370. Is that right? Jeez, okay. Well, that was a, uh, a brutal siege in Tripoli, but it succeeded, and we pillaged 1375, which is going to be real helpful for mercenaries. We lost Milan. Um, okay, so a few things happened here. We lost Lorraine. We lost Provence. We lost Milan. Those are all negatives in terms of our king's influence, right? Um, although, actually, we had already lost Provence. I'm not sure if there's an extra hit when the fort or the castle falls. But positives... We got Burgundy without a fight. We got Tripoli. We completed that not only as a, as a conquest, that's a, that's a positive for us, but it's also a crusade objective. We should add to our king's influence. So I'm really hoping not to see a civil war or a bunch of rebellions spring out. There we go. Ransom demanded. Um, I think that was the Provence army that's going to be mostly peasants. I'm going to decline. Right, turbulent priest slain. That's Thomas Beckett's martyrdom. And we've got a son. All right. Fantastic.
fantastic. That is a Crusades goal racked up for us. That is two points. Uh, okay. Let's see. It doesn't look like anything catastrophic happened. We've still got our empire uh, for now. Let's just take a look at the diplomacy here just to check how the Spanish are doing. Okay, the, uh, the Egyptians... The Egyptians are allied with the Byzantines. All right, so that's going to be very uncomfortable. Look at all that purple over here. Well, the Byzantines also have nothing else to do, really, at the moment. They're just allied with everybody around them except me. And so that is, uh, that is, that is a little alarming. But let's take a look at our income. Okay, negative 90. We're going to lose cash. That's somewhat expected because uh, all of these crusade units and the mercenaries we've been training are now uh, things we have to pay for. May as well just disband this ballista. Uh, I'm going to keep the catapult though. Let's see, we'll probably merge some of these units uh, eventually, but I think I want to hold on to the mercenaries. And it looks like everyone is still uh, quite happy in terms of loyalty. Alright, we've got a bishop there. We did have a bishop, we, so one got lost apparently. Okay, we're gonna have to uh, gonna have to work on those finances, but let's see, public order wise, in Tripoli, what can we do? Well, actually, we've got uh, sort of a nice setup here. We've got improved farmland, so this is getting us 466. I'm gonna crank up the taxes as well, and then of course, the Egyptian Egyptians are still posting large armies. Uh, this is Palestine. This is going to be probably the last crusade objective I'm going to go for, unless something changes with Edessa. I don't want to start a war with the Byzantines, uh, but it may be forced on us. Uh, so we're going to want to go uh, with, let's see. First of all, you notice that when we fought in Tripoli, we fought, uh, there were stone walls on the sort of the inner wall, and then there was an outer section that was wooden walls. Constructing this upgrade replaces that wooden wall with stone. So I'm going to definitely go for that, and then I'm going to queue up a watchtower here just so I don't forget. Uh, in terms of the lordship here, this is going to grant two loyalty and an acumen as well as a piety point. So that's that might be kind of worth it. Tripoli does have trade goods. This is actually quite nice as well. I'd forgotten about this. Um, this guy might be useful to have loyal, but on the other hand, he's plenty loyal as it is, and it may be more useful to have someone with higher... Uh, acumen. Let's see if anyone here fits the bill. I'd like to have sort of noble style generals if possible. Let's go with this horseman unit. I mean, he's not great, but he's got some acumen. Well, uh, we'll put him as Count of Tripoli, and uh, everything's nice there. Now, in terms of recruitment here, we don't have a whole lot, but we can actually start replacing these archers. So I am definitely going to do that, and I'm going to risk getting a couple of turkopoles here, just because I think something's coming uh, from the Byzantines. Or from the uh, or from the Egyptians. Okay, we were not attacked by the Italians. That's wonderful news. And yes, I know I'm still operating at that deficit. Uh, that's just going to have to be the way it is for a little while. One of the great things about this, though, about the Spanish retreat from Burgundy, is that now their forces in Lorraine are completely cut off, and we can get rid of one of these units of Jeanettes. We can get rid of their archers, get rid of their ballista, but we need to counterattack because otherwise they're going to attack our keep. We do have a curtain wall here that's going to make life a little harder for them. But I don't have the kind of units in the fort that I would really want to be there. Let's just bring our princess down to act as a spy in these outer provinces of the Spanish. But let's see, we can move units down from Friesland, from Franconia. Uh, yeah, let's move the Spearman unit in. I think we can risk Franconia's taxes increasing a little bit. And here we are allied with the French, but not the English. So there is a chance that if we move units away from Flanders, that may be seen as an invitation or a sign of weakness for the English to attack. I don't think that's very likely because the English don't have a great army here. I mean, actually, these guys are all upgraded. So this, these Hobolars could be a problem. But I think in terms of numbers, this is going to at least intimidate them. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, we have a curtain wall here too. Looks like I was pretty vigilant about that. Let's bring... Jeez, I'm not so sure actually. The units here have pretty good 
uh, valor. I get these these Spanish Trinettes are probably um, maybe it's Valencia that gives them that bonus. So that's going to be tough. Let's see. I want to basically take all of these and go into Toulouse. Now, us attacking into Toulouse is not going to provide any river barrier, uh, so we can just do that. Again, I don't really care about Provence. I'm going to isolate them there. We're going to hopefully just eliminate uh, the Spanish forces in Toulouse. If the king wants to join and we can all wipe him out, that'd be fantastic. And then I'm just going to move back into Provence, burn this to the ground, you know, uh, maybe invite some rebels to take it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe try to hold it. It's an extended border with the French. But the thing I'm thinking here is, you know, on the one hand, I want to stick close to my uh, glorious achievement goals. On the other hand, going back to Burgundy and Provence, that's really rough. You know, trying to hold those while you've got an enemy right here. And if I destroy everything, you know, I could try it because there's a chance that the rebellion could be a reemergence of the Aragonese. So let's give that a shot, even though it's not ideal. And um, I think we've got a free hand to attack the Spanish at this point. I don't think the Pope is going to excommunicate us for that. Let's see. I don't want to decrease my borders with the Danes. Okay, we're actually making money now. 287. Uh, so we can afford to do a little bit of training. Yeah, let's do Swabians. They're not that expensive. I mean, to, to train, yes, but upkeep is fairly low. Uh, I guess I'll throw some peasants in, just for numbers. Uh, and here, what do I want to bring over? I'm kind of tempted to bring this general over, just temporarily, and hope the English don't see it as an opportunity. The problem is we get a bunch of peasants. Let's get all the peasants and kind of useful, useless units out of here. And what does that look like? I mean, I guess if the English attack, I could just counterattack, right? And then that would be uh, that would be just another opportunity. So we'll go with that. I will train a unit of urban militia here as well. And we've got another boat in the English Channel, which means we've got an opportunity to, to do some trading with Northumbria. Uh, command for either of these is is equal, so it doesn't matter. But the other thing that I'd forgotten was that we do have a port and a trading post in Friesland, which means that we're going to be trading wool, uh, probably not with Northumbria again, but we will be trading wool with Normandy and with Aquitaine. So that's going to just increase our trading income. And you can check the status of, uh, of the sea regions by pressing the V key. It'll tell you where enemy boats are located with a red uh, display of the sea region. Your own ships. So I think what it means is if your own ships are there and there are no enemies present, it's going to show up as green. If you don't have any ships, it's going to show as yellow if it's adjacent to you or adjacent to your territories, I guess. Or it shows up as yellow if there are ships which are not yours, but you're not at war with them. Something like that. All right, so we got a plan. Uh, I think this is going to be overkill, but I want to make sure this is this is an easy fight. This is going to be just a flat land. Should be a pretty basic battle, but here um, I guess there's an op there's a chance that the Italians could attack from Milan, but they're probably going to be trying to spread their forces out so they don't leave themselves vulnerable in Venice. Venice is really important to them. This has got a lot of trade income. It's making 587 currently. It's kind of their capital initially, although Milan does have a castle. Uh, we do have mercs. I could theoretically uh, get some more. Let's see. Let's let's get a unit of spearmen in Switzerland just so I have a solid hundred men. Bring these spearmen down, and here we'll go with uh, with a unit of spears, and I'm going to leave one unit behind. May as well be this. Uh, well, let's let's take little pieces, I guess. Fifty-seven guys could be useful. All right, from here we're gonna take. Yep, the nine peasants. We're just taking all the understrength stuff. 
is that going to be enough? 50, no, definitely not. So, yeah, let's take the 57. 50, 60, yeah, let's, let's do, let's do the 29 feudal uh, sergeants, just, just to be totally sure. And we're going to take Prince Lothair into Toulouse. All right, and here in Toulouse, they have fairly large forces. Uh, it looks like they've got a couple full-strength feudal sergeants. Very good, sort of an upgrade of the spearmen. They've got spears, they've got javelins, they've got Spanish chinets. And they do have, oh my gosh, a six-star prince with six valor. Uh, maybe I should have brought the Swabians over, but I'm going to outnumber them. I've got a lot more archers. Let's see, is, is there any way they want to cease fire now? They might, now that they have Provence. Let's um let's cancel that. Let's uh we're just gonna keep him here. We're gonna give that another shot a little bit later. All right. Is there anything else I want to build? I think I'm I'm building everywhere I really want to. So we'll end the turn. And I'm curious to see what they're gonna move in to Toulouse. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, there's a big counterattack. Okay, our garrison, garrison sallies and learning. This is so stressful. Uh, we're going to do just fine here. All right, fine throughout the day, yes. We're going to lead with our archers, so we'll do the classic uh, three-line defense formation. This is looking quite nice. Jeez, I'm tempted to leave Flanders sort of weak and just use these guys down in the south. Okay, where's my peasants at? They're up front. All right, that's uh, that's not great. So I'll have to remember to switch them around. All right, no cav on my part, so that means those ballistas are gonna have a field day. Halt, slow down. We're just gonna have to take the ballista fire, and actually, this the peasants can soak javelin fire. This is great. This is what we want right here. We should take out their general, and this is their most dangerous unit by far. move them a little bit forward. Are we in range of the ballista? No, actually, we're not. So let's just concentrate on that ballista. Alright, now that that's gone... Alright, it's gonna... I wish it would bring you back to your normal uh, group formation. The, uh, the, the, the controls again, are a little wonky with, with this game. It takes a lot of getting used to. Uh, but, we'll, you know, that's that's close enough, I guess. We can bring the archers something like that. And now that their junettes are basically gone, they're going to bring up their archers who are going to get shot to pieces. Alright, I think I can keep this group the way it is now by bringing... Yes. There we go. We're just going to take this methodically. Those feudal sergeants are the next most dangerous unit. And what I want to do here is have the peasants fall back, actually. And hopefully we're going to time this right so that the spearmen hit them, and then we can just flank with our feudal sergeants. Although the, the archers are not going to skirmish. What a bunch of jerks. All right, well, I guess we can try to get them out of there, but... Oh, they're on Engage at Will for some reason? Oh, because they're fighting, I guess. All right, but this should be fine. In fact, I bring the peasants around. You know, a little risky there. But 
but they can help shore up morale. I think we should be okay. Our feudal, sar feudal men at arms have taken no losses yet. And these feudal sergeants are just about gone. We're now uh, getting into the spearmen. Great. Great, great, great. All right, let's bring up the main infantry. And the peasants can just be on the routers, and we're going to catch them, and this should be a nice big route. Beautiful. Brave and poor son that he is, the enemy general flees. All right, we'll just speed this up. We're not going to catch all of them. But they have nowhere to retreat. All right. So, we've conquered Lorraine. The Spanish have withdrawn from Toulouse. So where did they go? Looks like they went back in Aragon, maybe Provence. They definitely moved some guys into Provence. All right, that's under siege, and Tripoli is invaded. Okay. All right, so we're actually not on the battlefield. Um, so I had a crash. I, I did a, uh, an attempt to the quick save there, and it, and it just sort of uh, stopped working. Sometimes that pre-battle quick save can be a little touchy, and uh, so that's um, just something to be aware of, I guess. Uh, however, when I reloaded, I received a message. I reloaded from that quick save, uh, and I got a message that the Egyptians have decided they cannot win the battle and are retreating. So uh, something happened in which we ended up not having to fight that battle. It's now 1144, and uh, we're still training stuff, uh, apparently. Or maybe this is just... I, I don't know. Uh, regardless, we'll, we'll have to see what happened. I'm just getting the flashing icon because when you load up a game, uh, the goblet for glorious achievements flashes. We may get attacked again, so we may have another chance to, uh, to attempt this battle. Uh, but we have, as you can see, we've, we've conquered Toulouse, and now we can take a look... At, um, at what is going on around here. And we're just cranking out the princesses. Let's just uh, keep them keep them on the march, see what's where. Um, okay, so I think we've, we've done a good, a good number on the Spanish. One of the problems, though, with our current position is that I had planned to come down from Burgundy to hit Toulouse and then swipe over to Provence. But now, of course, that's going to be a river battle. As you can see, the waterways is river here. So we're going to have one bridge... Uh, I believe, possibly two. Uh, nevertheless, this might be a good move. It might be the better move, although it's a, it's a river either way. Hmm. The question is, do I want to continue, you know, prosecuting this siege, or do I want to press on and hurt the Spanish in some other way? Um, in other words, I could just take these troops, which are fresh, didn't even have to fight in Toulouse. And, uh, and hit Provence, which might be good because these guys may be heading up to Burgundy anyway, right? So that would help stave off that attack. Alternatively, I could go down into Aragon with these forces and, uh, and try to put some pressure on King Fernando II. He's 55, he's pretty old. Uh, if he suffers a defeat or has to withdraw or feels compelled to withdraw, uh, that could be a disaster for his faction. Although the loyalty of these guys, well, it's, it's kind of questionable in some cases. In some cases, it's not looking very good. So that, that could be a good move for us. Uh, but this is very mountainous terrain. So the location is, is inland. It's hills and mountains, which means from our perspective, we're going to see hills first and then mountains. They're going to be on the mountains, right? So it, it, it sort of tells you the progress that you're going to face coming from Toulouse, uh, which means we're going to be fighting really drastically uphill, and these guys are very good commanders. Uh, we're probably going to get counterattacked, in fact, and so it may not be worth it trying to assault because we're going to face a big defensive battle in which we may be outnumbered. So what I'm going to try to do actually is, yeah, let's just go ahead and move all of these guys uh, over to Provence. Absolutely all of them. We're just going to put taxes to very low in Toulouse. They're going to probably take it back. And I'm going to see, if they all move back west into Toulouse, we may end up fighting a defensive battle there anyway. Something's going to have to determine, um, you know, who gets precedence, the, which attacker uh, gets the attack. They've got 
one, two, basically three full units of Junettes. They've got one fantastic Prince, although he did withdraw from the last battle. And they've got two units of archers, four units of archers, basically five units of archers. They've got also a, you know, a couple of units of these feudal sergeants. So this is going to be a bridge battle, and, uh, and it's not going to be nice as a result. However, we can hire some mercenaries, and there are some decent ones here. We're not making a lot of money. But we could bring down some mercenaries like the Drugina Cav and the Armored Spearmen. Let's do that. Uh, let's bring down these Spearmen. Actually, no. Let's bring down these guys. Or maybe we should bring them over to over to Tyrolia. Yeah, let's, let's do that for now. Consolidate all these troops so we can take a look at what we've got. Bring the archer down and the Swabian swords down with the king. Actually, we've got a lot of Swabian swords here, which is good, honestly, because they could they could hit us from Milan. So I'd rather lose Burgundy again than lose than lose Tyrolia, I guess, uh, because that would allow us to counterattack. We uh, we have about six more turns before or before we can attack the Italians without fear of reprisal. So we've got a little bit of time. Let's go down. Let's go down into Lorraine. I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave a unit of peasants here. This is really, really risky. But let's bring these guys here to potentially... Uh, if the Italians attack and it's a defense, that's okay. That's not going to get us excommunicated. We're just shoring this up with, uh, with urban militias. You know, peasants, just kind of whatever at this point. raise taxes in Burgundy again. Let's just double check that we've got all the taxes uh, that we need. Very high, very high. Okay. And yeah, in Tripoli, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, we didn't train, we didn't actually train our archers, possibly because, I don't know, there was an attack. It's just very weird, but we did get this unit of Turkopoles. Um, do I want them down here? Probably not. Let's leave them. Uh, let's leave them here for this force, and let's see what happens. Oh, there they go. <laughs> No. Oh gosh, this is that's bad. I mean, I saw it coming. It's not a terrible surprise, but uh, we've lost to lose. Okay, they didn't bring in a lot of guys, and in fact, they moved their king away into Castile. That's kind of good. I don't like that king. He's got he's got good stats. Okay, Provence. They've retreated. Where? Probably back to Toulouse. I'm really curious as to see uh, what, what they're going to do. All right, Andronicus Comninus is attacking us in Antioch. He is a, a what, remember those Jedis I talked about? Those uh, Jedi generals, and that, that's what we're facing here. He's got a nine valor, but it's just one man. This is just literally him uh, 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 on a cataphract. He's got Varangian guard, and he's got 100 Byzantine infantry. These are This is a, this is a tough little army here. And we don't really have the forces to match it. We've got a couple of Turkopoles. We've got Teutonic Sergeants, and we've got five Royal Knights. I mean, the Turkopoles are what's given me a little bit of hope here. Let's just command the defense. Yeah. Teutonic Sergeants are also good. And I think what we want to do is get our cavalry right out and ready to go. We have no line. I mean, we've got javelins and peasants, and this is all just terrible. I guess we could set up on a hill back there somewhere. 
might be good actually because they're uh, they've got, they got some heavy infantry. They're going to be marching around, and then we can uh, retreat back to the fort. This hill is not very promising, but let's um, we can at least hide our guys in the woods, right? So we're going to be uh, taking a slightly uh, different approach with our cav. Then I don't want them. I don't want them all alone out front. I mean, I guess I can keep the Turkopoles out there. Let's do that. We'll just leave them to harass. And time to get away. If they march, they can't shoot. But that's also true of my men. All right, let's withdraw, and the horse archers, you know, may want to attack us. And if we can get away from the, f the main army, I will take that fight. My guys have two valor, and I think they're a little better in melee than just flat-out horse archers. But I don't want to engage them right here because the urbans are going to catch up and we're going to have some infantry joining the battle. So we want to get away before, before that happens. At least that's causing these guys to get tired, but what's waiting for them over here is really nothing that's threatening at all. So, you know, yeah, we're tiring out their infantry, but it's not going to matter too much. Okay. Let's see, now they're kind of separating. They're not chasing us now because they're 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 uh, too far away from their support. All right, let's keep on them. This unit could actually be a big problem for our uh, tiny forces over there. Gosh, if I could, if they were further away from the infantry, I'd go for it. Put them on engage at will, though. That'll at least maybe push these guys. Let's do it. Let's give it a shot. Oh, they're attacking, too. Oh, this might not be good. All right, we took out almost ten of them so far. Oh, that's right, Varangian Guard. All right, let's get out of here. There's no way I'm going to win this. I'm just trying to do some damage. And if I can bring these guys all back towards my um, my Teutonic Sergeants, I would be okay with them getting in this fight. All right, do you want to attack my Turkopoles? Yes, you do. All right, let's bring the Teutons out. Evenly matched. Royal Knights too, yep, everybody here. Just in case we need the help. We're going to bring the general closer. That's going to help their morale a little bit. Come on, come on, come on. I needed these guys to break a lot sooner. But all these units are going to have quite high morale as a result of this awesome general who's leading them. And this might be the end of our crusade state because we're also being attacked down in uh, Tripoli by the Egyptians, theoretically. Look at this, they're just not fleeing. Alright, everybody out. I waited too long for this order.
away, back away. And yeah, your cab is not super responsive when you try to get them out of these situations. Uh, you know, they're not they're not gonna necessarily just just obey your orders. Alright, let's get the javelin men down. If I can kill a couple Varangians, that'll be kinda nice. Killed one Byzantine infantry so far. These guys, they can't replace at least for a little while, I think. Let's keep them on engage at will just so they can get close enough to fire. Those Varangians are tough, man. They've got excellent armor. These guys have quite good armor as well. We've got to remember that, the, that we can't uh, fire while moving. So... Oh, but look at this, our javelins. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, this is gonna be the end of it though, because, because they're gonna rout. javelins remaining. Let's just keep leading the uh, the bad guys around. They're going to get tired out at some point here. There's the general. Again, there's, there's no way we're going to get him. Look how fast they are on the charge. They're almost catching my calf. We are quite tired. We're attacking their Byzantine infantry. I'm surprised how little damage they're taking, but it is... You know, horse archers... Oh my gosh, that was... A, what was... Uh, uh, the Trebizons. Okay. Look, just about every javelin's taken out a guy. This is fantastic. Okay, that, that's it, though. You know, you guys have done great. You're going to earn a uh, withdrawal from battle, and uh, the peasants, you know what, let's, uh, let's send them down here, why not? Some of these guys, at least, are going to, uh, to flee and get back to the fort, but the Byzantines and the Egyptians are allied. I don't think we can sustain this. I think we're, we're going to lose, yep. Get the better of him, and now he flees. Maybe I can run these guys down here. They're going to just route away. Let's, uh, let's charge them all in, and we'll just let this resolve. Okay, so that's terrible. Antioch is lost. And Tripoli, again, the Egyptians have decided that they're retreating. Oh, oh my gosh, massive Italian fleets in the Bay of Biscay. But we won. Enemy ships sunk one, own, shop, own ships lost zero. All right. And we've got a ransom from the Byzantines, a ransom demand. Uh, let's see, 23, 109. We don't have the funds. Oh, wow. There's lots of stuff going on in this game. All right, so th this is, I'm going to take this as a good thing that the French are having trouble because this is going to give the English something to do. All right, that's not uh, attack me. All right, thank God. The king of Hungary is staying with us, and he's ditching the Byzantines. Same with the Danes. Beautiful. At least I don't have to worry about my east and north. All right, Ludwig. Oh, good runner. He was my good general, too, or the, uh, the governor, I believe. All right. Well, we took back Provence without a fight, and now the question is, do we want to go uh, into Toulouse? I mean, this is the status quo. That's all we've done is maintain the status quo. Uh, in uh, in southern France, you know, the, at the beginning of the episode, these were in Spanish hands, or um, yeah, they'd been lost to the Spanish, and we were attempting to take them back. We've done our, our ring around the Rosie, uh, but again, I don't think this is sustainable, just given the numbers that are on our borders. On the other hand, attacking a bridge battle 
is going to be pretty rough unless we throw absolutely everything at it. And I think that's what we're going to have to do. We've got a four-star general here, Lord Debar, all the way down from Flanders. Um, he is most eloquent. He's a fanatic. Uh, none of that's really going to help him. Although eloquent may, actually. Is that going to help with morale? No, it's just, just, uh, just piety. Okay, none of this is going to help. Uh, none of these traits are helping. But four stars is quite nice. And that's at least going to give these guys a run for their money. They've got a lot of archers, though. I mean, so do we. So it's going to be a lot of archering, archery duels at the bridge. And if we pour in four stacks, you know, they may just decide they, they don't have a lot that they can, they can do against that. Um, however, if I don't bring in all, if I do bring in all four stacks, I'm going to be leaving Provence basically empty. And that's going to be a huge invite to the Italians. Now, I would honestly, in some ways, rather lose Provence to the Italians. String them out a little bit. We wait a few turns for, uh, for, for the uh, excommunication warning to expire, or for the Pope to die, or for my king to die. And then I think the, the tracking uh, stops. Look at his influence. He's pumped that up quite a bit in the past few turns. Um, and so I think I'm going to risk that. Send all these guys in, and we've got, uh, let's see. Let's bring the archers. If I've got 100 peasants, I guess I can leave them here. Just, you know, as a token thing in case the, um, in case the Italians don't attack for some miraculous reason. All right, and we've got some very expensive units here. We're losing 300 florins, so I need to get this to a, a conclusion. And you know, they're not massing forces in Venice. So I think I can kind of afford to move these guys away. All right, we've actually got, got a, nice, a nice force under my king. But in a little while, we're going to lose Prince Herman, either because he's going to die of old age, or more likely, his older brother's going to die, and he's going to have to go back to Germany to be crowned as the emperor and um, you know if I could see and I am gonna next turn and be able, be able to see into uh, into the borders around me and see what they've got I'm guessing Nur ad Din here is picking up some bad traits uh, from being too hesitant to attack uh, but the question is do I want to save Antioch I mean I would love to on the one hand I just don't know that it's sustainable in terms of points, Antioch is worth three, Tripoli is worth two. Tripoli, though, it has a keep. So I think we're going to have to pick up Antioch a bit later. Jeez. And we're going to be uh, we're going to be low on funds, but hopefully if we resolve this Spanish situation, uh, we can fix that. If, if we can just make them withdraw, that'd be very nice. What I'd love to see is the Hungarians to start attacking the Byzantines. All right, yeah, they're assaulting Antioch, so we're just going to lose that. Okay, we invade to lose. And they've got, they've got a lot of guys here. Uh, but not all their archers are in the first wave, and all we need to beat is this first wave. Basically, they do have a ballista. <laughs> That's going to be rough, and they get a lot of heavy spears. Um, we've got some decent stuff. I think I'm going to bring these mercs down quite low into the rotation. I'd rather have my own guys. Let's see. I think I want my Drugina cab actually. Like, first thing. Let's actually swap out. Uh, let's swap out. Probably just this regular unit of spears, as much as I like the look of it. A solid kind of boxy unit here. Actually, is this a river crossing? Am I not seeing a river? Because that is going to make a difference. There's no river here. Oh, we got very lucky. I don't know why, but there's no, this is not counting as a river battle. 
All right. Uh, great. Then I think, honestly, I think this is this is looking pretty good. Uh, four archers to their four archers. Now they've got uh, they have a lot of cav. I don't, but the Drugina cav is awesome. Bonus versus armored troops. We can dismount these guys to feudal uh, foot knights, I believe, which is another awesome unit. But I think I'd rather have them as cavalry. Let's do it. Okay, it's rain. We are going to... Let's wait. I know they've got as many archers as I, as I do. It probably doesn't matter, but at least the visibility is not going to be affecting me quite so much. So we'll do our uh, three-line defense again. Spearmen, spearmen on the right and center. Feudal men-at-arms on the left. Italian infantry. And then we've got more infantry here. And here's our, the uh, Drugina Cav. So a very cool unit. They've got axes, and they're effective against armor. So really, like an overpowered unit in, in a way. We can dismount them to, yeah, feudal foot knights. But this is a strong cab unit too. If it was a bridge battle, I would have dismounted them, and that's kind of why I brought them at first. Uh, this is a prince. I've got to remember that. He's not leading this fight. Um, but let's go. They're right up there in the woods like a bunch of jerks. Let's, let's be careful and get around them to the left. All right, they're going to hit us with, uh, with some archers. Oh my gosh, they're going to swarm us with their uh, cab. No, nope, it looks like they're having second thoughts. Moving back, they are bringing javelin men, however. This is not good. We're all strung out on a, the down slope. All right, but they are just javelin men. Here come feudal sergeants, though. Let's get these guys up front. They're just kind of toying with us. All right, let's just hold. We're going to absorb javelins. And I think I want my royal knights on the left, at least for now. If we can catch these guys, that would be awesome. There's some archers. There's a lot of archers up there, actually. That's not good. Oh my gosh, I feel like we're going to have a big break here any time. Here comes the prince. Throw in the general, I guess. All right, they're fighting here. Oh, gosh. Let's bring my own prince down. He's got five valor. Let's attack those royal knights. If we could kill the general. The Regina Cav are winning. Evenly matched. How are we doing? 11 royal knights. That did a lot of damage to them. All right, I'm hearing routing, but it's not us. Dugine is losing badly. God, that is terrible. We're just fighting Spanish Jeanettes, but they're kicking our butts over there. All right, finally the enemy's starting to route on the left, mostly. Where's the king? Or the, the enemy prince, rather. Still holding strong. Our royal knights are doing fantastic. Where's my spearman? Where's my spearman? All right, they're over here. Let's go after that uh, that enemy general. We're getting some routing too. Yep, turn around, face him, take him out. Oh gosh, we're gonna lose the Drugina. All right, can we bring on um, any reinforcements? We can't yet. Just set the assembly point flag in case we can actually do this. All right, let's go. We got to keep up the pressure. We can't just sit around. Let's hit those spearmen. Everybody stays together. We're going in this direction. We're pushing them that way. They have reinforcements too, by the way. We draw from the battle. Gosh, if we could, if we could kill him, obviously that would be kind of a big deal. Um, I'm hearing some routing. The Drugina have held. Wow. 
but they get a lot more of these uh, of these other cav, or they get a couple other units at least. Let's bring the archers. Uh, I guess keep them right there actually. Where's my general? Okay, he's down here. Oh gosh. Alright, we're following spearmen. We don't need to follow ten spearmen. But we will follow these Spanish trinettes. These Royal Knights are winning easily, and eventually we're gonna get to recall some men. Let's uh, let's bring the archers. Well, I guess let's do this. Let's bring the general to attack their general. And I want to shoot at their Jeanettes. I want to get them to engage at will. All archers to engage at will right now. The Georgina are now, uh, oh gosh, they're outnumbered. Wavering. Archers are just firing down at us with impunity. Or at least surrounding their prince. Dugina's gone. Spanish, uh, Italian infantry gone. We're gonna win up here probably, unless we get a morale shock, which we may. One royal knight left. Those Jeanettes, uh, we are whittling them down. They are gonna be gone, and we can theoretically bring on some reinforcements. I don't know what I'm gonna do though. I don't I don't know that I want to push with the reinforcements. Well, it would be useful to uh, pay attention here with some of my idle units. All right, let's withdraw these archers who have nothing else to do at this point. Uh, actually, let's throw them in. They'll support these feudal men-at-arms who are chasing... what? Chasing spearmen, I guess? Some of our men are just getting out of control in the woods here, and our general's doing okay, evenly matched against his one royal knight. Oh, here, they're throwing in, uh, they're throwing in their Jeanettes. Yeah, we need to just keep this unit off of our back. And our guys need to withdraw off the field so we can bring on reinforcements. Okay, good, we're at least keeping them busy with our archer. That's fine. All right, everyone is doing stuff. Thank God, wow. Okay. I'm gonna keep my general down here with the archers, with uh, with these spearmen. We're gonna get some reinforcements. These guys may decide to withdraw. Now, are, are you attacking? Let's turn, pull off, and attack these Spanish Jeanettes. Archers are running away, but I'd rather get rid of this unit. Oh, gosh, nope. Yeah, we're not done yet. Okay, withdraw you from battle. Withdraw you from battle. Where's the, where's the 52? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I just let everybody uh, go wherever they, wherever they wanted to. Okay, there's kind of where I'm forming up. 52. It looks like they're marching away. I'm going to bring them back. And you guys are over here, where you had uh, worked with the general to kill the enemy commander. That's all good. Yeah, the archers can go up into the woods and just kind of keep an eye on things. My forces are basically routing or uh, or standing still. It looks like the enemy is withdrawing, and they may just be leaving the field completely. So let's get the reinforcements, bring them on as the slots open up. Uh, and they're just hanging out. Oh, nope, that was our that was our archers. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I'm going to kill captured soldiers. We're going to continue. Wow. Did not know how that was going to go. Again, we've got Toulouse captured under siege. And uh, we've got a castle assault in Antioch. I'm just going to automatically resolve that. We're going to lose. And they pillaged it. Wow, we sunk two enemy ships. This, this ship here, this is just a single bark. It's... No command, I don't think. Yeah, Crusade Province lost. Our forces have been pushed from their objective, but inspired by their faith, your people are ready to try again. The Crusade Marker has been placed in its base province. Oh, that is awesome. I forgot that was a mechanic. Uh, so, uh, no, I don't have the money. 
but we've got an heir, Prince Heinrich. Oh my gosh, the Italians want peace? Ooh. They're allied. Okay, this is very confusing. They are offering us their princess, which is usually a great move. Uh, and he would, uh, she would marry Prince Heinrich. Heinrich may be the heir at this point. Uh, he may take over from um, uh, from the other prince who's over or in Tripoli, because we've had some guys come of age recently. I think he just came of age, and so he may be the one who's uh, who, who will take over when the current king dies. I don't know. I wish I could tell. Uh, but regardless, if this happens, then there's going to be an alliance between me and the Italians. That'll be peace. Now, what may happen as a result of that is then the Italians are going to have to decide who they want to remain allied with, me or the Egyptians. And so it may then bring us back down to a neutral state if they drop the alliance. But at that point, I would still have the princess, so I'd still have a married heir, and we would have ended the Italian war. Now, on the one hand, I don't necessarily want to end the Italian war just yet, because there's a chance I could get Milan, I could get Tuscany, I need to get those for glorious achievements. But I've got time for those achievements. Uh, in five years, the first counting of the Holy Roman Empire glorious achievement goal is going to occur. That's 1150. But there are two other points at which that can be counted. So I'm going to accept this. All right, he's got his builder trait. And let's see how this all shakes out. We're allied with the Italians. Wow. Now, they are allied with the Egyptians. And we're at war with the Egyptians. So next turn, there's going to be a decision. And they're either going to uh, stick with me or stick with the Egyptians. Either way, I'm going to go ahead with a fort in Provence. Why not? Actually, I don't have the money. Oh my gosh. Um, either way... Uh, I'm going to leave this the way it is. I'm not going to go back and, and defend Provence anymore. I'm going to uh, stick around here. We're going to we're gonna wait out to lose. I'm not going to attack Aragon because it's just too dangerous. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this. Uh, usually I don't expand beyond my glorious achievements. Again, that's sort of the, the role play of this, uh, of this campaign. And it's also part of the fun of playing glorious achievements. You don't have to just conquer the map and you get more factions kicking around which is pretty entertaining uh, but yeah we're going to keep this uh, and then if they want to attack us they're going to have to hit our three you know three stack army here with uh, with with who was this uh, Lord Durbar fantastic uh, generalship there only one year I'm just going to wait I'm not going to even bother and we're going to take a look at what we're facing uh, over in Tripoli let's see is Nur din still around uh, okay, he's not getting any bad traits in terms of being hesitant. Uh, but this is not Nuruddin, this is a different guy, so maybe uh, maybe that general is, is getting some bad traits. Regardless, um, we, uh, we have lost Antioch for sure. That said, we've got a crusade marker, and we may, theoretically, be able to send it against... Uh, against Antioch. Let's see if the Pope will allow it, if we will need to spend money. 250 florins. I'm going to take it. That's going to give us some extra troops. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of the usual. We've got a, a two-star commander, a couple of order foot soldiers, a few fanatics. You know, I'm not going to um, uh, build anything else. I'm just going to go ahead and, and send these guys over to Bavaria. I think I will, though, take... Uh, should I take Swabians with me? Let's take a unit. Uh, because I'm feeling a little more confident. Actually, yes. Next turn I'll be able to merge them. I'm feeling a little better uh, uh, about... Uh, actually, I can't. I can't train anything. I've got no money. Uh, but I'm feeling a little bit better about Italy, about the border with Italy. So I think I can take away one unit of Swabians. And I'm, I'm thinking I want them because we're going to be fighting not so much in the desert. And we're going to be fighting against heavily armored troops. So it's going to be a very different kind of warfare fighting the Byzantines uh, than it is fighting, uh, fighting the Egyptians. 
And the other thing is, every single one of these provinces we passed through before is going to be hostile to us. We're going to have to, to conquer all of these places on our way to Antioch. I don't think the Byzantines can allow us to march through their lands. Um, so so that, that's what we're looking at. Well, I think this is a good point for us to end. It's sort of a weird point in our campaign. Uh, but we have lost Antioch, but we started a crusade to take it back from the perfidious Byzantines. And uh, we are going to be taking Toulouse, possibly uh, seeing off another Spanish counterattack, uh, possibly uh, maintaining peace with the Italians. We're going to have to figure out our finances, but we are gradually making money again. And so hopefully, uh, hopefully this stuff will start to stabilize. Uh, but that is going to be the topic of the next episode. See you then.